You know, the more I think about it, the more I realise that actors in some ways are like wine, in that I want to drink them until I wake up on the floor two days later in a pool of my own urine. Wait, what? Some provide a brief but intense burst of interest in new flavours that hint at great things to come, but are frustratingly short-lived. Others start out cheap and nasty and leave a distinctly unpleasant aftertaste, so that you genuinely have to wonder why the fuck people keep buying them. But there are others, that rare breed of excellent quality and timeless ingredients, that only seem to improve with age, and the more you sample them, the more you come to appreciate just how good they are. Which brings me neatly along to Tom Cruise, who these days seems to be one of the few remaining beacons of hope that Hollywood can still make decent, well-constructed films that bring people together instead of pushing them apart and making everyone crazy. His Mission Impossible films just never seem to run out of steam, delivering awesome action, fun characters and cool gadgets that seems more like James Bond than the actual fucking Bond movies now. But take a look through his back catalogue, and apart from a few stinkers, you'll be treated to some of the best films of their time, or in fact any time. One of which is The Last Samurai, an epic action-adventure movie from 2003 set in 19th century Japan about an American cavalry officer who gets captured and eventually absorbed into the country's last remaining samurai clan. It's an awesome film with superb performances, brilliantly staged combat scenes, solid characters and storytelling, and a poignant message about the value of tradition and legacy. And for some reason, it's a film that doesn't seem to get talked about nearly as much as it should these days. So fuck it, I'm about to change that. The Last Samurai kicks off in the late 19th century. Japan's going through a period of change and upheaval, rapidly embracing Western culture and technology, spearheaded by a young and impressionable new emperor who's easily swayed by powerful and unscrupulous businessmen with their own agendas. But not everyone in Japan's happy about the loss of their old way of life, and a rebellion led by a charismatic samurai warrior warrior named Katsumoto is beginning to gather popular support. Clearly something needs to be done. The rebellion has to be crushed before it turns into outright revolution. The problem is that Japan's army is weak and inexperienced, and in no condition to take on such a dangerous enemy. What they need are experienced officers to whip them into shape. Fast. This is where we're introduced to Nathan Algren, a US Army captain who fought and defeated the Native Americans years earlier. These days he's basically a drunk and a burnout, traumatised and embittered by his role in such a brutal war, but he's also hard up for a bit of cash and so he reluctantly accepts the offer. Before you know it, he's on his way to Japan. Unfortunately, he's barely had time to train the men under his command before they're rushed into combat against Katsumoto's army. Needless to say, the battle turns into a complete disaster. The Japanese troops are easily routed and wiped out, and only Algren survives by fighting to literally the last man. Katsumoto is impressed by his courage and so spares his life, taking him prisoner instead so that he can learn more about him. He's treated like a piece of shit at first, bullied and beaten by the samurai who've got nothing but contempt for him, but gradually his refusal to submit earns their respect, and he begins to learn their language and traditions. The more he learns, the more he comes to respect and admire his captors, especially Katsumoto himself, who turns out to be a cultured, edgy educated and compassionate man, fighting to preserve his way of life. And the two men eventually become good friends. Unfortunately though, the outside world soon catches up to them. An attempt to meet with the Emperor and negotiate a peaceful settlement ends in bloodshed, forcing the samurai to retreat back to their village. And with a newly equipped and much more powerful Japanese army marching to crush them once and for all, their only choice is to make a last stand. The basic storyline of The Last Samurai will be pretty familiar to anyone that's seen Dances with Wolves or, God help us, Avatar. An outsider gets absorbed into an alien culture and gradually comes to accept and embrace it, the new perspective helping him to see the flaws and shortcomings of the people he once belonged to, and question where his loyalties really lie. It's a tried and tested plot, but it works so well here because it's masterfully executed by great writing and superb performances. The movie really takes its time building up the relationship between Algren and Katsumoto, fleshing out what drives and motivates both men, how they see the world and what they stand for. Their early scenes where they spark off each other are great fun to watch, especially when you've got actors like Tom Cruise and Ken Watanabe involved. Jesus, after all those Godzilla movies, I had to keep reminding myself that Watanabe can actually do more than just stare off into the distance, looking vaguely shocked. As the two men learn mutual respect, you can actually buy into it because they both have qualities that the other would realistically admire. From Katsumoto, Algren learns the importance of restraint, compassion, wisdom and balance, while Katsumoto is impressed by Algren's 
defiance, determination and creative thinking. It makes for an interesting contrast that the film explores without any particular bias or agenda. God only knows what The Last Samurai would look like if it was made today. The action and battle scenes are brilliantly staged and very capably directed, making a fight between a medieval army and one armed with rifles and artillery seem vaguely plausible is no mean feat, but director Edward Zwick never misses a beat on this one. And the final cavalry charge, as Katsumoto's forces make a suicidal attack in the face of cannon, infantry and Gatling guns is fucking haunting to watch. Not being a Japanese man from the late 19th century myself, I can't realistically vouch for how historically accurate the film is, but I do get the impression that it's doing its best to portray traditional Japanese culture fairly and faithfully. The backdrop of The Last Samurai is a clash of the old and the new, the traditional world making a defiant last stand in the face of creeping modernity. And whether or not Katsumoto and his followers are ultimately successful is perhaps less important than what they chose to stand, fight and die for. And maybe in the end, that's what really matters. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.